Hey guys, it's Maria here from the Happy Healing Shop and welcome to another video. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. Uh, this video is a kind of a play off of the tarot pick a card videos, which I've been wanting to do for forever. However, today it came to me that I should do a pick a, pick a message video um, with channeled messages. Message one will be the chevron amethyst. Message two will be the honey calcite. Message three will be the lapis lazuli. Message four will be the tiger's eye. And number five will be the green fluorite. Pick a crystal that calls out to you. Now don't focus on the visual aspects of the crystal. Rather let yourself be guided to an energy that you feel drawn to. So note, close your eyes, open them, kind of notice where you're drawn to. Ask your guides first and foremost um, to guide you to the crystal that represents the message that's best for you. I've called upon my angels and guides to help me give these messages today. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Message one, which is the Chevron Amethyst. So the message for the Chevron Amethyst people, group one, will be related to matters of spiritual growth via methods of spiritual practice, opening yourself up to higher realms, astral travel, things like this, um, opening your psychic senses, getting comfortable with becoming a spiritual being, having spiritual being having a human experience. Um, what I'm seeing with this group is that they are torn between two worlds, if you will. A world that's more material and physical, the grind of today, the grind of the hustle and bustle of a physical job and a physical world and material possessions and overhead and rent and time management and all these things. And then a whole other world that's been kind of revealing itself in regards to in regards to the cosmic realms, the astral realms, higher dimensions, different types of beings, you know, receiving communication from them, getting in touch with your guides and your loved ones that have passed on, things like this. Maybe you're getting really into starting to do tarot or different types of divination tools like pendulums or ceremonies and rituals. Maybe you're starting to gravitate towards doing spiritual rituals for yourself, but you feel so drawn to it, but you don't quite know where it fits in in your daily life. The message that I see for this group is The message that I'm seeing for this group is to continue to build these habits in a special time set aside outside of your, let's say, material duties. So let's give an example. Take a look at the timeline of your day. You can draw it out if you want on a little piece of paper or something and kind of see where your time is laid out. Start from the morning, you, the moment you wake up all the way through to the very end of your day. Map out the key aspects of your day that you are consistent every single day, more or less. So let's give an example. Maybe you're waking up an hour before you have to go to work. You take 10 minutes to shower. You take five minutes to brush your teeth. You take 20 minutes to do your makeup etc. right? And that block of time represents the getting ready for work time. Then there's the leaving time and the sitting in traffic and whatever if you're a commuter. Um, even if you're working from home, there's still that prep kind of getting in the zone to start your work day. And then maybe when you get to work, you have certain things you have to do that are almost like rituals every day, answering emails, checking in with your team, etc. depending on what kind of work you're doing, getting your directive for the day and so on and so on. Find moments in that timeline that you've laid out of your day where you can incorporate some of these spiritual practices. The great thing is you really don't need that much time in order to do them. For example, 
you can, in the morning, allot five extra minutes of your getting ready time by waking up five minutes earlier to meditate or to say a blessing for your day or to set an intention for your day or to watch a short video on YouTube, let's say, about something that you enjoy that's in this realm or taking that five minutes to connect with your guides and to ask for their guidance throughout the day or for their guidance before you start the, your day, things like that. Pull a daily tarot card for your day, things that you need to focus on for that day, something, a theme that you should work on that day, things like that. Um, squeezing in at lunchtime um, some, you know, some similar exercise. You get a little more time there. Let's say you get a 30 to 30 minute to an hour lunch, depending on where you work and what's um, area of the United States or the world you're in. Let's say you get anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour of a lunch break and depending on your, where you work and you can use that time. You can break up that time where, okay, I'm going to go grab some food or I'm going to grab my lunch bag. And then I'm going to use the rest of that time to, and then, you know, insert any of the types of spiritual things that you would make you happy at your lunch break in the middle of the day, kind of break up that monotony. Again, watch a video about something that you're interested in in this realm. Bring a book with you that you really enjoy. Practice one of your divination tools. Pendulums fit in purses, guys. They, they're really handy. You can just slide them in there. <laughs> Take it with you everywhere and practice if you want. Um, do a deep meditation in your car. Close your eyes and put your headphones in and listen to some really beautiful meditation music and you know, just kind of get that break, get out of your body for a little bit. Um, there's so many ways that you can incorporate this beginning, middle, end of your day. Those are the big areas you can probably squeeze things like this in the most, but find a way to incorporate it and um, don't get discouraged. Part of our experience here right now is to kind of learn how to balance day-to-day -day duties and work and things like that with being more, more spiritually aware beings. So that's kind of part of the lessons humanity is learning is that there's certain things we do for survival, but we can also start to intertwine those things into the spiritual realm, things that are going to be synergistic with our material lives. Um, so don't worry, this is all part of the balancing process and you are creating your own reality in whatever way you want even if it feels like time is tight even if you're you know you've got kids and are running around and you feel like you never have a spare moment um even just five minutes even when you're in the shower i kid you not uh as a psychic medium spirits and beings talk to me all the time in the shower like immediately as soon as i get in the shower i start getting downloads i start getting you know, people trying to get my attention, things like that. And I'm not disturbed by it because it's, you know, they're not thinking of it the same way we do as, you know, modesty. Even just taking that shower time and just meditating, you can even play some meditation music, put some crystals around your feet, drop some essential oils in and meditate, ask for guidance. Like squeeze it into any moment you can and you'd be surprised like how much it actually helps. So best of luck to you guys on your journey. Let me know in the comments below if this was helpful for you guys and if this resonated with you and if you have any questions regarding this reading. Thanks for watching. Okay, so group two is the honey calcite. Beautiful stone. Um, for you, uh, Oh, okay, so for this group, I'm getting that you've been bogged down by emotional issues, um, uncomfortable feelings, past traumas, stress, um, and feeling like you can't get past those negative, perceived like you know, negative emotions, traumas, weighing you down, um, kind of feeling like you're dragging a ball and chain around with you everywhere. It's kind of this weighed down feeling. Um, you're getting this kind of, am I ever going to shake this kind of feeling? And you're kind of getting tired of the depression and the anxiety and the crippling fear and just being kind of wanting to retreat and, you know, not being, not being comfortable getting out there in the world, feeling like the world is a dangerous place for you.
you feel like you're getting pummeled by life and you feel like you can't catch a break. I've been there, I know how this feels. Um, and it's a really crappy feeling for sure. Um, but just know that this is part of your path and it's essential for you because learning how to deal with these types of feelings and to find empowerment within them is one of your biggest um, gifts that can come out of this. Um, just having it, the strength that grows out of this turmoil, out of this trauma. And it's just, um, it's a really, it, it can feel very overwhelming and it can feel like you have no one to talk to, but just know that there are so many other people out there who are going through what you're going through. And there's some amazing groups out there online, via meetups, Facebook groups, etc., other forms of social media of people who support each other and help each other through these things. And you can learn from each other about how, how people find strength in different ways through these tough times. The process of working through the trauma and finding the light is one of the most powerful things a soul can go through um, in lesson-wise and strength and beauty. and It's one of the most powerful things a soul can go through. And we choose these experiences before we come down here. And you might ask yourself, why in the hell would I want to pick this experience for myself? Well, it's because you're a strong, brave soul that came down and knew that you were going to learn so much if you did this. Um, it's kind of like a fast track to uh, awakening even. Um, a lot of people who could be considered indigos, for example, star seeds, um, people who have a lot of gifts, uh, metaphysical type gifts, there's there's a big pattern where they've had very traumatic childhoods or they had big trauma happen to them or multiple traumas happen to them throughout life and it just seems like you know they might even think they have bad luck or something but it's actually um the concept of the the wounded becoming he healing themselves and then becoming the healer teachers so because you're going through this these wounds that you're trying to recover from these are gonna make you great teachers, great healers. Um, there's um, there's a metaphor I get a lot. Um, just, I don't know, I guess the, the spirits I work with like to use trees a lot um, as examples, but um, one of the ones I got was a flashback to uh, my parents buying this tree and uh, for our backyard at the time, it was, a, it was a new house and so we had nothing in our backyard and so my parents were buying this eucalyptus tree and I remember the lady at the nursery was telling my parents, like, make sure you water, you water, um, you don't overwater the, uh, they, the, the lady at the nursery told my parents, make sure you don't overwater this tree uh, because you don't want it to have lazy roots. Uh, you want the roots to be able to learn how to go further into the ground and seek water. And that, that kind of creates like a hardship for the tree but it makes the tree so strong and resilient and sturdy. And so, and that's a practice a lot of times with, you know, kind of training trees to have stronger root systems. And I, and for some reason that really stuck out as a very strong metaphor for me. It's come up several times. Um, I've been shown that like reference, hey, remember that thing that lady said? That's a good metaphor um, for this kind of thing because um, it's almost like, this pain and the suffering that you've gone through is making you your root system strong and sturdy and you're gonna you're blossoming into this beautiful strong tree and you know this majestic tree and you're gonna be able to help others and heal others through this pain you've experienced and part of a big part of working through this trauma is finding community. I can say from experience that it's easy to isolate oneself when they're going through trauma, kind of this feeling of like, no one understands me or I don't want to burden people with my problems. But that's actually getting further away from healing is to just always be, you know, this just wounded and by yourself. Um, so just know that this experience is going to make you an amazing healer 
and you're going to be able to inspire others one day. So just find your people. Find people who will support you. They don't have to be in person. It can be online, like I said. And just support yourself with healthy activities. Make sure you cleanse your energy uh, daily. Cleanse your space. Create a safe little nest for yourself. Maybe it's your bedroom. Maybe it's a little spot in your home. A reading nook. Something that's your sacred little space. Your safe, cozy little space. And decorate it. And fill it with things that make you happy. And go there and meditate and listen to your guidance. And, and know that you are safe. So um, that was the message I got for the, the Honey Cow site. Um, you guys are, are probably sweet as honey souls and I'm so sorry you, you, you went through this again. Um, seriously, reaching out for support for people who care about you and, and even new people, like I said, in groups, it's gonna be paramount. Um, I wish you all the best in your healing journey and you know I hope that you feel empowered uh, through this process of healing. Um, I'm wishing you all the best. Let me know in the comments below if this reading resonated with you and if you have any questions about it. With the utmost light and love, thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna do the third group, which is the Tiger's Eye. This group I'm getting, oh, interesting. For some reason I'm getting that this group um, has been wanting to branch out and find opportunities. Uh, this this group is wanting to branch out and kind of go outside their comfort zone, but they're really terrified to do it. Um, I'm getting that maybe you are uh, traveling or you're wanting to travel. Um, you're wanting to go outside the bounds of what you normally do and um, go somewhere that frightens you even, um, but you, feel blocked in some way. And I think I'm getting a few different things, either monetary, um, fear of going to a new place and being uncomfortable and just like, you know, that discomfort of going somewhere so different. Um, people telling you you shouldn't do it or people telling you, kind of putting their fear on you. Um, and then I'm also seeing time. I'm seeing time feels like a restraint to some of you who want who are wanting to kind of get outside your shell, have new adventures, travel, see the world, you know, branch outside of yourself. Even this could, I'm also getting, could be like a new career, a new different career for yourself. So, um, yeah, wow. I gotta tell you that change is never easy. It is, there's always, you know, seems to be obstacles when we want to make a huge change in our life. But I gotta tell you, the more it scares you, the more you probably should do it. <laughs> um, I, there was a pattern I noticed with very successful people who've really just built these amazing careers or, you know, empires and people who've started these amazing companies and done amazing things in the world. And I noticed over and over and over when people ask them, like, he's success, you know, one of the things that I noticed a lot of them say is that if it doesn't terrify you, you shouldn't do it. So the fact that you're scared of it probably means you should do it more. So um, of course, follow your intuition. If you're getting a bad feeling, like something is not right, like something bad's gonna happen, listen to your intuition. But as far as just being afraid of failure or being afraid of being afraid of doing something different, um, these are the experiences that help us grow and help us like morph and change into like an, still ourselves, but just like an even more blossomed version of ourselves and all these new opportunities kind of come up and show themselves when you with each new big step you take forward so doing these uncomfortable things are so good for you and your growth and um it's funny that when you actually get a chance to do it you look back and you're like oh that wasn't as bad as I thought. And I, man, this is, this feels great. I can't wait for the next thing. So learning to empower yourself through these challenges are great. Um, so make a list of these things that you really wanting to do and set a time and a date. Uh, let's set, and set a, set a kind of a deadline for when you want to do this thing and, or these things even map it out in like a, a kind of a list. Um, or a timeline and say, okay, 
Um, these are the things I really want to achieve over this span of time. And, you know, check in with yourself about how you feel with each one that you list and, and talk to yourself and talk to your guidance and, and listen to your response. Um, why am I feeling, you know, scared about this? Well, blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I acknowledge those feelings. Um, and I give love to those feelings. I send light to those feelings, but you know, I want to accomplish this challenge that you put forth for yourself to say, uh, by this time, this date, um, or this kind of year or whatever, set some sort of kind of standard or, goal, or set some sort of goal when you're, when you're listing these things out. So, um, yeah, don't be afraid to take that big step forward. Um, it's part of your soul's path and you're going to see it's like a good Pandora's box. Like, <laughs> like when you take the step and do one, let's say one of these things that you've been wanting to do and are too afraid of, all of a sudden the mat, the chest opens and there's just all these other opportunities that you wouldn't have seen before. They wouldn't even have been in your, in your frame of reference or like in your universe, unless you had done the one big gate opener, the big, you know, um, kind of, uh, kind of big um, possibility opening session, <laughs> kind of opening the possibilities with this big event. Um, so think of it that way and like your life will just kind of be ever blossoming and ever expanding with each new challenge you take on. Um, and I get the feeling that um, there are probably two different types of people um, who picked this, this reading, this channeling um, for the stone is one people who kind of have taken a lot of risks but they're like trying to step it up and take a whole other level of risks and try a whole other level of things and they're like oh man i've reached my plateau of fearlessness i'm feeling like i'm finally like scared of something oh i've been afraid my whole life of doing these things i've just always made excuses for why i'm not going to do it and it's about darn time i want to do something but i'm still so scared so you know Either way, do it. Like seriously do it. Uh, again, from experience, uh, I could say that the things that I pushed myself way outside of my comfort zone to do were uh, things that I am so, so glad that I did. Terrified me, made me so freaked out, that anxious at times. But man, I grew so freaking much. It's like I couldn't, it's almost like I couldn't have seen it coming, like how much I would grow out of that. Like I knew it would cause me to grow, but there's just so many possibilities that weren't even on my radar. So do it. Have faith in yourself. Ask your guides for, for messages, for, ask your guides for advice. Channel your own guidance system and listen to it and make little steps forward, you know, start to prep for these things by taking small steps. And some of you might want to just start taking big leaps and leaps. And some of you might want to start just like going straight there. <laughs> so however way you choose to do it, just, you know, give one thing a try and see how it goes and then keep going. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Let me know if this resonated with any of you in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. So this next one is for the Lapis Lazuli group, and um, I'm getting that this group, getting an interesting like water energy with this group. Um, Okay, it's interesting. I was getting like images of like a sea journey, like a voyage. Um, it was really interesting. I was just trying to make sense of it. And then I got um, imagery of um, 
kind of family struggles. Um, so an ancestral kind of, kind of inheriting certain ancestral expectations. So if you chose this um, lapis lazuli, what I'm getting for you is that um, there is a whole world out there, journeys afoot waiting out there for you. Um, but there's so many aspects of your life that are being kind of controlled, maybe sabotaged, um, guilt, maybe you're feeling guilted into not or doing things or doing things because of your heavy familial influence, um, kind of having maybe a very big cultural family that they all stick together and they all have certain expectations and certain pressures and certain statuses and things like that that are being put on you, but you just don't feel like you quite fit in with that. You feel like you're your own person, but it, they're always trying to like push it out of you somehow. They're always trying to like make you discard that. Um, you know, maybe you're being told that you're a disappointment because you're not doing certain things. Maybe you're being threatened even, like we're not gonna support you anymore if you don't do what we say. Um, there's a certain energy of um, kind of repressing your bright shining self because you are torn between who you want to be and who you know you are and who you want to be and evolve into and the stability I guess of a tight-knit family or a, even the suffocation of the tight-knit family and their expectations and the love you have for them and not wanting to let them down um, this is something that is very difficult to deal with for sure it's it, it feels like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place so what I'm seeing for you is that you can honor your family and love them but they can't you can't let them take your own life away from you you can't let them stop you from being the person you know you are from doing the things you always want to do in life. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to live as full of a life if you're not doing you. And it's so hard. And this is one of your huge lessons. This is a huge, huge lesson for your soul is to work through this energy and to learn how to, um, to learn how to break outside of that energy which is very intense and I'm sure like you <laughs> there are families that um, some of you have families that are probably pulling out all the stops and they know how to push your buttons they know the guilt buttons they're like boop 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 up and then before you know it, you're like okay fine and you know you're just constantly feeling like you're compromising your own happiness for the sake of the greater family and it's not healthy for you um, it was there for a time to kind of set the stage for where the growth that you need to do. And so now the stage has been set and now it's your time to break, start breaking through that. Start, if, if it's too overwhelming for you, start small. Start with little things um, that help you to kind of gain your independence. Um, and especially if you're an adult watching this, like I hope, I, I, I would assume most of my viewers are adults. Um, if you're not an adult, I know it's it's harder um, to deal with this because you might be financially dependent on them, you're still in school, things like that. But where you can, try and find individuality, moments of individuality that you can express. So, um, and th but this, this reading is for people who can, who are, let's say, adults for the most part. Um, so that's why I'm gonna, the context I'm gonna put it in right now. But if you are, like, maybe you're an adult and you're living at home because they've convinced you that it's the wise thing to do and you're going to save so much money, blah, 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 but you just feel suffocated all the time and you just feel like, oh my God, <laughs> I am just, I can't do this. Okay, I'm saving money, but my God, I'm not happy. So, so you need to push forward and to know that you're going to have pushback. You're going to have people that are upset with you and your family. You're going to be maybe called a disappointment, things like that. They're, they're going to push your buttons on high gear. The more you push, the more you go be yourself, the more they're going to push at you. But you know what? There's a certain point where you have to just enjoy your life 
and a lot of times they'll calm down eventually. They'll always have a little bit of resentment maybe, but they'll calm down eventually. Um, so, and that's, that's, that's part this particular lesson is very annoying, I know, but it is, again, a great opportunity for growth and you're going to feel so much better even with all the knowing that you've disappointed family members and that maybe they're talking about you and judging you and gossiping about you, just, it doesn't matter when you feel the, that feeling of freedom. So get out there, start to slowly but surely move yourself out of that weird dynamic and start doing things that you really enjoy. Um, I've seen a lot of people who've gone through this. I've personally gone through this to some extent and I gotta tell you, it does get better. Um, it's annoying as hell sometimes and it's very emotional and stressful sometimes and sad, but I can't even tell you how much better it feels to just like be your own person and do what you want in life. So yeah, and you never know, there might be other family members that have been secretly kind of just like going with the pack, but really wanted to be their own people and never did. And just always had that regret and they might be inspired watching you do it. So. You never know who you might who you might affect in a positive way so get out there and be you man <laughs> i hope this resonated with you guys uh, let me know in the comments below and uh, and if you have any questions as well so leave them in the comments um but thank you so much for watching all right so i had to stop recording last night and i'm picking up this recording right now for the last one the fifth group um so <laughs> that's why I look different and everything. Um, but the last group is the green fluorite. And Okay, so the last one is green fluorite, and um, what I'm getting, and what I'm getting for the green fluorite group is I'm getting this is about education. Um, that you're at a point in your life where you're either thinking about pursuing higher level education, um, in the middle of pursuing higher education, or you've already been educated in some way or another and are thinking about maybe self-educating in a certain area. Um, and obviously like anytime you kind of go back to being in the student mode, in the student mode, it can be a little, um, it can be a little tricky to kind of balance all those things, especially if you have a job. Um, it feels like so many people I've met um, in like corporate environments and we're working full-time intense jobs are also going back to school to get their master's degrees or to, you know, build on their education. I'm like, how do you do it? <laughs> so this uh, message is about making sure you always follow your calling and in doing that not to completely deplete yourself where you're sacrificing your wellness for the sake of higher education because if you're not well then you're not going to learn as well you're not going to absorb the information and take it in as well you're also not going to feel as excited to continue the education you might burn yourself out halfway through or three quarters of the way through and so it's really important to make sure that if you're pursuing um, any extra communication, uh, if you're pursuing any kind of extra um, education to make sure that you're always nurturing yourself, taking care of yourself and 
you kind of have to balance it out. So if you're going to go do something really intensive, you're going to have to probably give up some other things that you're doing consistently, maybe switch to a part-time job um, because of course, you know, people need to make money to live. However, you also don't want to, you also don't want to get yourself into like an insane amount of debt or with money or time or health because when things are so unbalanced, then it increases the chance for other th things that you probably don't want to happen, like illness and and burnout and strained relationships and strained communication. So you always have to kind of rebalance out your priorities anytime you want to add something really intensive into your life like that. Now, ultimately, it's for your higher good. That's great. But you do have to kind of weigh out things and start to give up a couple of the things that maybe not serving you anymore, maybe not worth hanging on to while you're pursuing higher level education. Maybe you know you you get a loan that is reasonable for you in order to continue this education so that you can stop working in a job that maybe won't be conducive to you learning. So it's never easy. Education definitely takes a lot of sacrifice and takes a lot of um, dynamic planning sometimes and fitting into your schedule and trying to kind of like make it all work. But just know that um, if you're feeling really called to go to receive education, it's probably, you know, for your highest good. But you do need to make sure that you are taking care of yourself at the end of the day. So don't get discouraged. Think dynamically, you know, try and weigh things out. Um, make sure that you're not compromising the core of your survival, like your basic needs for happiness and for at least a feeling of well-being. So follow your dreams, go get that extra education, um, but just take care of yourself. So another note for this group too is if you really want to gain an education on, let's say, a variety of topics or take some courses, don't um, limit yourself to only an institutional style of learning, meaning you have to go to school, you have to take out a loan, you know, get in all this debt and you know rely on uh, some sort of uh, college university trade school program of some sort to um, enrich you luckily now we live in the age of technology where you can access information for free all over the place we live in this awesome age of technology now which has a lot of downsides but also some of the biggest upsides are free education or very inexpensive education online education is great because it's significantly cheaper. You can get a larger variety of information because there's just not as much overhead as going to a physical school and therefore having to charge bigger tuitions to accommodate all, to accommodate all the operations and expenses of having a physical building and all the staff. So I would highly recommend looking for some online programs or teaching yourself by curating the curriculum that you want Go and find things that you're really drawn to and make your own curriculum and find and read everything you can on it. Buying books, even buying mini e-courses, all these things are amazing ways to get more of an education or learn about things you're interested in and you know being able to go for it. So unless the program you need a certification or degree in order to advance in that particular field, like explore your explore your options, you know, and don't automatically think you have to get burdened with, you know, all of this um, extra overhead for yourself. For example, I wanted to maybe look into not being a naturopathic practitioner or a holistic practitioner, but, you know, there's some really expensive programs out there. And I was like, I already went to architecture school. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I want to sit here and spend getting more debt, get more loans, all that stuff. So over the years, like over the last like six, seven years, I've just been educating myself and learning everything I can about the air, things that I'm interested in. And I'm still able to help people. Um, and it's really about the quality of work that you provide and your attitude and your ethics and in this type of realm. If it's, you know, somewhere more institutional, you might need to get an institutional kind of more degree because that's, you know, some areas still haven't really accepted more of the unconditional, um, unconventional approach to learning and, and diplomas and such. So explore your options. Don't pigeonhole yourself. And like I said, take care of yourself. Take your vitamins. 
make sure you're staying hydrated. Make sure you're not drinking too much caffeine. Get some sleep. Um, weigh out your uh, stresses and try and find ways to cut back on stress to accommodate for the more extra stress you're going to add on yourself by going through an education. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you. Definitely let me know um, if this resonated for you uh, in the comments below and if you have any questions about it. And thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, stay tuned for more. We're always going to have uh, more content coming out as often as possible so that we can continue to offer resources to you guys so we can be one of those outlets for you that um, you can learn and grow from hopefully and um, we hope to create a community around this. So um, definitely check us out if you're interested in finding out more about us at our website at uh, thehappyhealingshop.com. Uh, we offer psychic mediumship with tarot readings. Uh, we offer uh, Reiki healing, etc. So if you're interested in booking a reading or if you want to just read our blog where we post articles on similar topics, um, check that website out. Follow us on Instagram at The Happy Healing Shop to stay up to date um, with what we're doing. And uh, also you can join our Facebook group, The Happy Healers, uh, on our Happy Healing Facebook page. Um, also stay tuned for uh, more events. We usually have um, a monthly psychic night where we get together and do readings. People can get readings and and eat and have some make some new friends and get to talk about all this cool mystical stuff and find hopefully a community and a family that they can feel safe in. So definitely uh, keep checking out our social media to stay media to stay updated and uh, we hope to see you back here soon. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.